You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Hey everyone, what's going on tonight? I just wanted to show you guys something that I found. It's pretty awesome. But I was actually talking to Shane earlier, and I told him about it, and I guess you probably, a lot of you know he went ahead and made a video. So I guess I gotta upload it. But anyway, it's a... Uh, it's pretty interesting that, uh, you know, in the end, when Jesus comes back and sets his kingdom up, there won't be any sun or moon because Christ is the light. So just check out these scriptures. I know most of you have probably read this, but there might be a few of you that haven't seen it. But in Revelation chapter 21, 23 through 25, it talks about, "...in the city had no need of the sun." neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. So when Christ is reigning, there's not going to be any more night and there's not going to be any more sun, you know, moving around the earth and the moon. You know, Christ will be the light. And um, it's actually in the scripture, too, if you go to Isaiah. So here's here's a second witness to it. And it's actually in, it's in a couple of other places. I couldn't find them. But anyway, this, this, this one right here is good enough. But uh, Isaiah chapter 60. 19 through 20, and right here it says, the, sh the sun shall be no more thy light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee, but the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy God thy glory. Right here, verse 20 says, Thy sun shall no more go down, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. For the Lord shall be thine everlasting light, and thy days of thy mourning shall be ended. Okay, right here it just says, uh, in verse 22, I put this one in here because he says, uh, A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. The Lord will hasten it in his time. Just symbolizing that when Christ comes back and sets up his kingdom, it's going to be for a thousand years. So that verse 22 talks about one, you know, will become 1,000. But anyway, I just wanted to show you guys uh, about when the end, you know, most, most of you guys know that, that the sun is not the center of the universe. We're not spinning and rotating and around it. You know, the earth is the center of the universe. The earth that we live on is God's footstool, and his heaven is right above but if you read through the book of Enoch, it talks a lot about the sun and the moon and their gates and the angels. They're actually angels is what it says in Enoch. But uh, anyway, what I'm getting at is uh, as far as there being no sun nor moon when Christ comes back because he will be the light is uh, when you go to Matthew 24. Oh, you know, when Jesus was telling the Jews, you know, like prophecy of what was to come. And I always hear a lot of people talk about how, uh, about the rapture, about the catching away, how they always will say Matthew 24, 29, where it says immediately after the tribulation of those days. But here, you guys check this out. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven will be shaken. What does that sound like where the sun is darkened and the moon doesn't give her light anymore? You know, this doesn't talk about it only happens temporarily. This is talking about the second coming of Christ. Christ will be the light. He's going to set his kingdom up for 1,000 years. So this Matthew twenty four twenty nine, because all throughout Matthew, 
it kind of jumps around a little bit and he tells you the signs of the end of time. But right here on 29, it's specific. He says immediately after the tribulation of those days. So this is talking about at the end of the seven year tribulation. You know, immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. This is clearly talking about the 1,000 years in Isaiah and Revelation where he says, the, su the sun shall be no more thy light by day, neither brightness shall the moon give her light. So this is clearly when God, when Jesus Christ comes back, Christ will be the light. There will be no more need for the sun or moon. Right here it says, And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. So I just thought that was kind of pretty cool. I've read this scripture a lot, and I've never really thought about it. But that's totally what it's talking about, where he says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days, where the sun is darkened and the moon, but that is where Christ is coming back, and he will be the light. But let me get on here and show you this. That This right here is a totally separate event. You know, this is the second coming. This is when Christ comes back and sets his kingdom up. It doesn't have anything to do with where uh, Paul, in 1 Corinthians, Paul reveals a mystery. He said, see, man didn't know this. God hadn't revealed it to the people yet. It's like in verse 51, he says, Behold, I show you a mystery. See, a mystery. He says, We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. So some of us aren't going to die. This is talking about where we are caught up to be with him in the clouds. It says, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Okay, in 1 Thessalonians 4, 17, says, Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. See, it's clearly talking about clouds where we're caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. So 18, verse 18 is very important. He says, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So the blessed hope, this is supposed to comfort the saints. You know, telling the saints that we're already in the great tribulation and that the mark of the beast is already here. I mean, how is that words of comfort? You see what I mean? There's going to be a catching away where we are called up to the air. You know, because... If you look at the second coming where Christ sets his kingdom up for 1,000 years, you know, why would we be caught up to the clouds to be with the Lord in the air when Jesus is already down here? You see what I mean? This is where he is setting his kingdom up for 1,000 years, and the saints and all of us will be there. Let me see. I don't know if I put this one down, but... uh. Yeah, I mean, the Matthew 24, Jesus is given prophecy of what's going to come. And the Jews, he was talking to the Jews. And uh, if you guys know that uh, the Great Tribulation is also referred to as, you know, Daniel's 70th week. It's the last week before Christ comes up and sets up his kingdom for a thousand years. It's also referred to as Jacob's trouble. You know, Jacob is Israel. Jesus was talking to the Jews, right? But this clearly doesn't have anything to do with this. It says, where we are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds. We're going to be caught up before he comes down here and sets up his kingdom. You know, we are going to be caught up. Before Jacob's trouble, we are the, the church, we are the bride, we are not Jacob. That's when God pours his wrath out. And he uh, actually talks about 
pouring his judgments on the earth and everything. But uh, let me see. Let's see if I can find this scripture right here. Okay, here it is. I wanted to pull this up. This is where uh, when we're caught up, we're, we're kept from the great tribulation right here. Uh, Revelation chapter 3, verse 10, he says, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. The hour is going to symbolize, that symbolizes Daniel's 70th week. That symbolizes the great tribulation. And if anybody doesn't think that that's what that's talking about, all they got to do is go down to Revelation chapter 17, verse 12, where it says, And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. So right here it shows you that the kings receive power one hour with the beast. So the beast will be reigning and ruling for one hour, that's the seven years. That's Jacob's trouble. The seven years they will be ruling and reigning for. Right here, if you look, Revelation 3.10, he says, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. So there's an hour of temptation that comes upon all of the world. I mean, what reminds you of something right now, a temptation that's coming upon all the world? Think about what's happening right now. And it's the whole world. It's just it's not just the United States, it's not just Canada or Australia, but this temptation is coming upon all of the world. And yeah, he's gonna end up keeping us. That's when we are called up to the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And this is gonna be before Christ comes back, his second coming. You know, Christ's second coming is when the sun and the moon are gone. They're darkened because Christ is the light, and it's also, this is before the uh, Antichrist, the beast, received power, right here. It says, and the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour. So that's the one hour that we are kept from, right here. Okay. I just basically wanted to show you, I thought that was pretty cool, where in Isaiah, where he talks about the sun and the moon will no longer be here. The Lord Christ Jesus will be the light. It's in Revelation 21 and Isaiah, and it fits perfectly for after the tribulation of those days. That's immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. That is when Christ Jesus is setting up his kingdom and ruling. Because in verse 30 it says, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And when everybody sees him coming in the clouds, the church, the bride, his bride is going to be right behind him riding with him. But yeah, and then uh, it says, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and shall gather together his elect. That's the Jews that survived the great tribulation from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. So anyway, I don't want to go in too detailed. I just basically wanted to show you guys about the sun and the moon being darkened, and then the uh, Matthew twenty four twenty nine. Anyway, I hope somebody gets something out of this, and uh, hope you guys have a blessed night. Take care. One day Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs?
occurred on a Sunday morning. My prophetic word to you this morning.